Vince agreed to let me go do things outside of wrestling. And uh, I had the chance to spend some time with him. He invited me to come to his place. Mm -hmm. And they're all there. Vince is there and Pat Patterson. I don't know who else was there. And Vince said they've got ulterior motives. And uh, then he went and got Jerry Briscoe. We went in the shower, and he proceeded to have Jerry Briscoe from the backside. He was a real hard worker, just a grunty style, like he was grunt. So I was interested to get involved, and uh, I told him what I wanted to do, you know, have people put around me that could direct me effectively so I could go on and be successful at it and stuff. There were plenty of guys there, and it just grew. So we both let one another F it, F it, F it. And they were congratulating me, saying, man, that was awesome. This is really great. And uh, late that night, Linda came into the picture. And I said, this is unnatural, you know. I've just never been into any of that stuff. You know, women and, you know, all that stuff and everything. That doesn't work for me. I almost fell on my knees and just started throwing up right there. And then uh, something told me to come. And he said, don't come. You don't need to come. And uh, I said, what do you mean don't come? It's what I wanted to do. And I didn't push it in their face. And he said, okay. It was unbelievable. It was a shoot. And I had incredible discipline. And uh, it was magic. Next morning, about 11.45, Vince eventually stepped in. And he couldn't even walk right. He stepped in and said, I'm not doing this anymore. We're not doing this stuff. And uh, I was really surprised that he did that. Like he just wanted to keep going from one thing to the next. As long as somebody would stick it out. I mean, he had an addiction problem. And, uh, you know, I would have expected more. And welcome back to Retro Wrestling Games Presents. I'm your host, Lex G. And with me, as always, is Matt Riley. How are you doing tonight, Matt? I'm swollen. <laughs> I'm grossed out, so. Oh, I'm not good. Yes. <laughs> a little banged up, playing hurt. All right, bless your heart. So today's ah. episode, we're going to take a look at New Japan Pro Wrestling, uh, Tokan Resudan 2. For the PlayStation 1. This game, Tokan Resudan 2, was released December 20th, 1996. It was released by Ukes and the Tomy Corporation. Don't know a lot about Tomy. I know there have been some games in the past though, but Ukes! Ukes, who currently currently do the uh, WWE games, the 2K games, along with 2K Sports. So they've been in the, uh, in the game for a while, so they bless their hearts. <laughs> This game is uh, very interesting. Again, it's I guess one of the forefathers of the uh, the SmackDown series. You know the games that you know continuously go on to this day. Although you know there's been changes over the last roughly, twenty years or so. This game is interesting because while it's a good game, the visuals are good. 
力いっぱい戦ってくれると思います。皆さんもせっかくソフトを変えたんですから、oh, えー、選手も頑張りますから、皆さんも頑張りますから、皆さんも頑張りますから、皆さんも頑張りますから、皆さんも頑張りますから、皆さんも頑張りますから、皆さんも頑張りますから、皆さんも頑張りますから、皆さんも頑張りますから、皆さんも頑張りますから、皆さんも頑張りますから、皆さんも頑張りますから、皆さんも頑張りますから、The、uh, WCW vs. the World or WCW World Tour. One of the big positives of this game is the intro. The title screen on this is one of the best title screens I've ever seen for any wrestling game ever. It's fantastic. It rivals、uh, WCW NWO Revenge, No Mercy, and、uh, WrestleMania 2000. It's that good. It's fantastic. It really kind of showcases the power of the PlayStation 1. Which、uh, a lot of people who don't know that when they went to 3D、uh, for the PlayStation 1, Sega Saturn, and those, those type of consoles, the early 3D games were all, were all really, really bad. They're learning how to do it. So a lot of times they get a pass. But you know, in this game's defense, I think their 3D looks pretty good. It's not as,、uh, as I guess, pixelated or boxy as、um, you would see in other installments. And you know, even some of the later games on the PS1. But, PlayStation 1 is、uh, notoriously bad for their、uh, for 3D games. Yeah, Steam go for the N64. They didn't really learn how to do 3D games until like Mario 64. I don't know where the controls were. Now, what are you going to do? So, the roster for this game is very interesting. It really kind of showcases a 1996 New Japan Pro Wrestling feel on this.、And、I'm just going to go through them real quickly. You have Antonio Noki, Tatsumi Fujinami, Ricky Choshu, Keiji Muto. Uh, Hashimoto, Chono, Sasuke, Koshinaka, Tenzan, Nishimura, Kojima,、uh, Juice and Thunder Liger, Wild Pegasus, also known as Chris Benoit, El Samurai, Kanemoto, Otani, The Great Muda, The Power Warrior, and then they have secret characters. They have young Antonio Noki,、uh, Sakaguchi, Hiroshi Hashi, a young Juice and Thunder Liger, Tiger Mask, Pegasus Kid, Carol Sean and Tiger Hattori, who is the、uh, famous referee over there. <laughs> the one thing that's incredibly awful about this game is t the wrestler select screen. Now, man, I know I showed you a picture of the select screen. What'd you think about it?、Uh, you know, one thing I like in a game is not having any idea what characters I'm going to use. I just let it pick for me because why do I care? You know, I think what happened was they were getting a lot of budget for certain aspects of this game, and they're like, oh man. We need more money to develop the,、uh, the screen thing. You didn't develop it?、Uh, let, whatever, no one will notice.、Yeah, that's, that's like basically any meeting I've been to in you know,、uh, previous professional jobs here where I was like on a design team.、Uh, eh, no one will notice. And I think they, just, they, they punted it. Oops. So, so I can explain for everyone what it looks like it's an isometric view of the ring, the Fire Pro wrestling. With very small sprites that represent each and every wrestler. Now, if you're not familiar with Japanese pro wrestling, you and I don't have any idea who anyone is. You know, in most games, they're just a picture with a name underneath it, right? This game's like, no, we're gonna make really small sprites of everyone. And, you know, just looking at this, I can tell, like, I, I see Muda, I see Inoki, I see Tenzon. Maybe Ricky Choshu in the black shirt. That's it. I have no idea who the fuck anyone else is. Yeah. So it's like, ugh. Like, they dropped the ball on that one really, really bad. I've never seen a t a s k screen like that before that or since. That's the only time I've seen it, you know. Although we have more games to play, so we'll, we'll find out if that's the,、uh, that's the deal. <laughs> <laughs> the control itself is, is pretty good. New Japan games are strange because. Every time you pull off a move, it tells you the move on the bottom of the screen, but it's in Japanese, so you don't know what that is. So it's kind of weird to have this weird kind of text underneath it. You know, I guess when you, when you throw a punch, it's just punch on the bottom for some reason, but it's in you know, Japanese you know, text. So you know, I'm pretty sure you can probably turn that off. Overall, I think you know, the, the game is good. I mean, I, can't, I really don't have that many complaints about it. So the game modes are as follows they have exposition match. IWGP Heavyweight Championship match, a G1 Climax League, a G1 Climax Tournament.、Um, that's for the heavyweights. For the junior heavyweights, they have the same thing. Expedition, Junior Heavyweight Championship match. Best of the Super Juniors League. 
and a New Japan Pro Wrestling tournament, and then there's open, I guess, open weight, which is a Burning Spirits Challenge exposition match. IWGP Heavyweight Champion versus the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Champion in the New Japan Pro Wrestling League, New Japan Pro Wrestling tournaments. And then, same thing for the tags, they have a exhibition match, IWGP Heavyweight Tag Team match, the SG Tag League, New Japan Pro Wrestling tournament. Same thing goes for the Junior Heavyweight Tag Team and then the Open. And there's also a Battle Royal um, as well, which is cool. Not a lot of games had battle royals at the time. <laughs> Again, in America, you would have saw the predecessor of this game, which would have been uh, Tokan Resuden 1, was ported to the United States as uh, Power Move Wrestling, which is a game that we'll review at some point uh, when I get two bucks to pay for it. Because it's fucking cheap as fuck on the internet. So, <laughs> <laughs> it just is. I don't know why. Oh, very common game. Yeah, I rented that game from the Blockbuster back in the day, and it's, it's weird. It's like a, it's a Japanese game that tries to be American. It's just anyway. We're not talking about this game. We're talking about uh, this game. Interesting to see Chris Benoit in this game as Wild Pegasus. Okay, this is a little bit pre WCW, although he would have won in WCW '95. But uh, very strange to see him in the game. Chris Benoit. Overrated. Hot take. Uh oh. Ow. Oh, what? I disagree, but we'll talk about <laughs> You should have stuck with the wild Pegasus gimmick, I'm just saying. Pegasus kid with the maps. Whatever it was, yeah. Pegasus. Well, there's two, he had wild Pegasus. When he unmasked, he was wild Pegasus because he didn't have the constraints of the mask. Oh. Hence, he was wild. Who I don't see on this roster is Black Tiger, Eddie Guerrero. Well, he was at the same time. So, yeah, I, I have brain races on the So, Matt, I know you've seen some, some video of this. Yes. What are your thoughts overall? Well, I think I'd be most frustrated by the selection process, but I'm... I always think back, like, if I was a kid, or I guess an adult, and I was playing, would this really keep my interest? And I think, you know, like, the, the title name, like G1 Climax Tournament, something like that, I'd buy in if I was a fan of it, but if I wasn't, I'd be like, meh, whatever. Yeah, I wonder how many, you know, how many, which I was 12 or 13 when this game came out. So, I wasn't in the tape trading, I didn't get into that to the uh, late late 90s, early 2000s. Uh, I've known what New Japan no Pro Wrestling was, um, just because of their, you know, appearances on WCW, because they were there quite a bit. Actually, there was the big New Japan versus WCW tournament, Starcade 95. Which uh, WCW won. Apparently, apparently, when WCW and New Japan made the, the deal in the nineties, not only did New Japan pay them a million dollars, but they sent them talent for free. It was the weirdest thing. I don't know why they made that deal. So WCW would send guys over to Japan. Japan would pay, like for instance, Sting. They would send Sting to Japan. They Sting would get paid by WCW. You would get a, a Japanese payoff. Yeah, and there's like there's nothing in it for New Japan to make that deal, other than getting their guys on American TV, which I don't know if they heard them or helped them or not. You know, they uh, had a couple different deals because they had uh, they had Chono and Muda, that famous match for the NWA title on the WCW earlier in the nineties, like that was ninety two, ninety three. I think I think one of the reasons they probably made the deal with WCW is they were trying to recreate you know, what happened with Muda. Now Muda went to WCW. Among a couple other places, he was in like he was in world class first, and he was bouncing around for a little bit, and that's what they used to do in Japan. Um, they probably should do that in WWE today. Is that anyone they think they have potential? The young boys, they'll send them abroad, and they would work a bunch of different territories and and find themselves, and then come back as a fully formed, fully full fledged performer at this point. But Muda took off in the states to the point where they almost put the belt on him. Yeah, WCW because he was so big. And people don't understand that today, not how big Muda was in the United States, but he was. They blew it that one. Yeah, and I think I, I think I told the story as Gary Hart. This is oh, because they, they wanted to turn Muda babyface. Gary Hart wasn't going to uh, wasn't going to be a babyface manager, so he kind of convinced them like not to do it. But yeah, they should have. It probably should have went from Flair to Muda to Sting. You know. Yeah. It's funny because I just heard an interview with Kevin Sullivan, 
and he said that you know, especially the NWA wrestling in general, wrestling was formed primarily in, in the Midwest by old white conservative men. Yeah. And when like stuff gets kind of murky, they just go back to what they know. So that's why they kept the belt on Flair for so long. Yeah. It was like, oh, we're not gonna pull the trigger on fucking Muda. We're not gonna pull the trigger on Luger. We're not gonna pull the trigger on Sting. They didn't even pull the trigger on Barry Windham. Um, they were about to go with Magnum, but you know, Magnum got the rack, and then you know they didn't put the belt on Nikita. They didn't put the belt on Luger. They didn't put the belt on Sting. They didn't put the belt on Muda. They, they didn't put the belt on Terry Funk. They put the belt on maybe Steamboat and Ronnie Garvin. Oh, Ronnie Garvin. I know. It goes back to my theory about how. Sometimes becoming a world champion will hurt your career, but we'll talk about it on a future show. Tommy Rich. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Matt, what what is your uh, kind of knowledge of uh, Japanese professional wrestling in general? Well, I watch what I watch. I usually watch on YouTube. You yeah. know, every so often I had I had DVDs and you know VHS back when I was when I was training. I would watch stuff to kind of get some ideas. But honestly, we talk about it at school and say, like, you know, uh, yeah, it's a great move. No one else will be able to take it. <laughs> and that's the thing. Like, if you call that spot, no one's going to know it. Right. And that's why, actually, for a while, what would happen was, like, uh, Walter would send guys to Japan. I remember uh, Harry Saturn went to Japan for a while. And, you know, he was like, money's great, food sucks. <laughs> you know, he's like, but you, you, know, you learn a lot there. And that I mean, was kind of like, what's that? Now they would like literally beat the shit out of you too. Yeah, and that shit was stiff as fuck. Yeah, and that's the thing is, I think, I think when you're comparing styles, the physical style, it's almost like I'm trying to say this in a way that's not going to sound awful. It's like a kid who hits you playing tag football to prove a point. Like, right. we get it, you're a little smaller, but you you, know, you still hit hard. Like, like that's why I think what's his name there, the guy just broke uh, Austin Aries' face. Uh, Nakamura. Yeah. I think his thing is there was like, oh, you know, King of Hearts style, etc. And you, know, you broke a dude's face. Like, end of the day, we're all the same team. You know, it's like, we're supposed to put on a good show. And he has size on him, too. It's not like he's a little guy, either. He has right. Size. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's the thing it comes down to. Like, you know, so stylized-wise, when I watched it, what I, actually what happened really was I started watching a lot of it on YouTube, and then I got into Lucha. And I just preferred Lucha. So at the time I had DirecTV and before I had Fios, so I used to watch a ton, you know, that way. Of like you think you stuff. think Lucha is easier to follow than uh, Japanese wrestling? Uh, you know, being yeah. American, I think everyone knows a little bit of Spanish. Right. Well, that's I think that's part of it. But also for me, it's not so much of a language barrier, but the performance style. Like it's easier to say, okay, I can tell who the bad guy is, good guy is. Plus. The gratuitous shots of hot chicks in the stands, way more on Lucha. <laughs> way more random, like, here's two hot girls, probably legal. Let's just focus on them for 30 seconds during this really amazing match. Plus, when I got into it, Lucha, like about, I'd say about back 2008, 2009, I think it was, there was this phenomenal feud with, oh, I can't forget the name. It was El Ver uh, Inferno. Alverno, I don't know if I pronounce it right. But basically, it was a mask versus mask match. And to preview it, they put like a package together, like at the start of the show, and then showed the match. But the, the package was set to uh, Duel of Fates from Star Wars. And it was just really well edited. And I mean, this is like a perfect like build up and, and payoff. And I think with the language barrier of the Japanese shows, when I'd watch them, it was never with American commentary. Um, oftentimes I found it was no commentary at all. So I was like, oh, okay. And it's and funny think, because when they brought the, when they brought Japanese footage from Japan, like say they play Japanese, like they would play Harley Race versus Dime Baba on Portland. Yep. They would leave in the commentary. Yeah. Like I don't know why. Like take the fucking commentary out and fuck put your own commentary. Gordon Zulu used to do that shit all the time. But you just leave, like even Vince did that shit. They would just leave the fucking Japanese commentary in. Yeah. Like, take it out. Like, what are you doing? Right. You know, especially in the early days, like, usually the the villains were the Americans. But as we got into, like, the 90s, there were, you know, there were baby faces and heels. But you can never really tell just by watching the match. You would have to, you know, understand the storyline going into it. Because by just watching the match, you couldn't tell who the baby face or heel was. 
So it was always kind of, it was always, it was a little bit different that way. I mean, it's changed dramatically now. Now right. it's, it's, it's more like other mainstream modern wrestling. Like the changes are not necessarily there. Their in ring performance are basically the same, but just now, you know, you can tell by the storylines and some of the, some of the, like their independent promotions are doing like really silly stuff too. It's, it's New Japan or Bust over in Japan right now. So, <laughs> at least that's my opinion. They're the biggest, at least. And um, they're having mostly good matches, so. They are the WWE of Japan, I guess. Yeah. Uh, which is good. It's funny that they haven't came out with a video game out in fucking years, though. So Yeah, I, it makes you wonder like, if they're like just sitting back thinking it's fine or if they're going to put together like a something worthwhile. It's, it's weird. I think the last one was, I think, one of the Wrestle Kingdom games was, was the last one. That was 2008 or something shit like that. I'm not even really sure. And there's funny because New Japan was owned by the by Ukes, who actually developed this game. <laughs> So they were actually, they bought it from Anoki. They they eventually sold it, but it's funny that they're owned by the video game company that made WWE games. But there's no currently, there's no current video games out um, for them. They're, they, Japan is weird now, because like, it's all about mobile games and shit over there. They have mobile games now, um, but nothing for a console. Um, it's really weird. Um, <laughs> right now it's mobile games and pachinko machines over in Japan, so <laughs> it's a two big thing. So, um, video games are kind of on the decline out there. So I think I think overall, uh, New Japan Pro Wrestling, uh, Tukan Wrestling and Two, um, I think it, it's a it, it's a good game. Like I said, the music is good. The intro screen is awesome. Um, the character select screen is the worst I've ever seen in the history of uh, wrestling video games. The graphics are good. Uh, the controls are good, but it seems kind of just boring. Um, it's it's I I know the difference between. A simulation game and an arcade style game, and I'm more of like someone that's a little bit in the middle. But this one is like way too slow for me for some reason. Uh, doesn't mean it's a bad game. I think it's a good game. It's just you know personal preference. I think it's a little slow. Um, but other than that, I think you know overall, I think it's a good game. And then you know looking back at the reviews from back in the day, people loved this game. So people they're giving it eights and seven out of tens, and and it did really well for a wrestling game in the uh, mid '90s. So. Alrighty, guys, so that's it for this episode. We are officially out of time. So join us next time on Retro Wrestling Games Presents. So for Matt Riley, I'm Lex G. Have a good